Eric Mangini is uh, rarely gives us an opportunity to get him in studio because but we had a big town meeting here today with a bunch of important people upstairs. And so you were part of that. We had our show going on. So I, I want to start with this because you were in years ago, you were in the Niners building. Yep. And there's a certain culture that has been built up through the years. They've had, you know, a single Terry Harbaugh chip, maybe not as much, but um, the current coach physicality, toughness, it's in the building. It yep. kind of breeds itself. And J-Mac and I had said this, extra days rest against an Eagles team that went to overtime. Defense was on the field for 90-plus snaps. I kind of felt like it was one of these games that Philadelphia was going to have no gas in the second half. And I think San Francisco is better, but some of this feels like situationally, Eric, you went into games on a short week, and you're like, we got to do stuff early because we'll have nothing left late. Well, it's not just the last game. It's the two games before that. They had Kansas City. They had Dallas. Every week for Philadelphia, it's been these heavyweight fights. And then they get to San Francisco, and it's there's not that much left. Right. Where for San Francisco, the, you know, the, their last three games haven't been nearly as challenging as, as what Philly's had to go through. Their tackling and, was bad. I thought, that, I thought Philly's tackling was bad. I thought that... You know, after they got held to the two field goals early in the first quarter, if, if they could have scored on either one of those, that could have changed momentum. And then once San Francisco got rolling, then the score is a lot more lopsided than really the game was. And, and it just felt like Philly was tired. It's like San Francisco was up for the big game. San Francisco was up for the NFC Championship rematch. <laughs> San Francisco was motivated. And Philly's like, okay, we got another, we got another one of these games. And then they they got one next week too, right? It goes to Dallas. Right. It's like week after week, Philly's getting challenged, where San Francisco rolls in there, and it's it's a, just a different equation, and it felt like it. Listen, they've blown out Dallas, and they've blown out Philadelphia. Is there, um, you know, it, it just they got better players than a lot of people. When you have to face Shanahan, if you watch their film and you were facing them. Um, you know, a lot of times you can say, take away their first look, take away their weakness, uh, make them left-handed. I'm not sure they have a left hand. Like, is there something you could do to attack the Niners? Cause Dallas and Philly couldn't do it where you do think it would weaken them. Yeah. Well, when, when he was in, uh, Atlanta and I was in San Francisco calling the defense, it's too hard to match what he does. So it's shifting, it's motioning, it's multiple personnel groups. It's a lot of different formations. So if you're trying to match everything he does, you can't. then it, yeah, it becomes multiples of multiples. So it be, the approach was more spin the Rolodex. So, okay, they're going to surprise us. Let's surprise them. So if you bring blitzes that are unexpected, if you're, if you're bringing things that are, that are not on the timetable that he's anticipating, there you go. then you got a chance to make some big negative plays with him, and it throws him off the rhythm. Also, you do have to go disrupt the receivers. There's a timing element to this offense. Yeah. So if you cut them free and, and they're running in zone, now that's catch and run, it's big spaces, and it's hard to match that. There's, it's too fast, and they're too good at it. So you, you've got to try to get them off balance, and then you also got to disrupt the timing. Now that Ayuk has become such a weapon, is there one of their players, McCaffrey, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, if you said, okay, we're going to try to eliminate blank? <laughs> It's, I, I would think instead of doing that, because it, it doesn't matter who would it look at yesterday, Kittle check uh, catches a check down and goes for 20. Uh, Ayuk, he catches a little shallow cross. Jennings. He goes for 30. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, it's these little check downs that go for 20, 30, 40 touchdowns right across the board. I would, I would think a better plan would be, okay, this play we're taking away Ayuk. This play we're going to take away Debo. This play. So, again, if they can't predict who you're taking away, so when they think you're doubling one, you go and double a different one. So, you, again, you're putting the pressure back on them to try to figure it out. And especially with a young quarterback, what it looks like isn't what it is. And it can't be the same thing over and over again because he is, he is a, a smart player and he can process that. So you just got to keep giving him different looks to try to confuse him. So Dallas and San Francisco, I don't think, have an overbearing flaw. So they're correctable. The Lions back end and the Philly and, and the Eagles back end, I don't think are correctable at this point. The trade deadline's gone. I do think there are some limitations to Philadelphia when they lost their linebackers. They're, you can't replace Steichen with Steichen. The, the kid is brilliant, right? And I do think there are some situations. As I watched Philadelphia, I thought they're a very good team. 
but they're not a great team with personnel. Is that fair? Well, what you're what you're banking on in Philadelphia is that, okay, your back end isn't very good, but your front is so good, and you've got depth on your front. So there's a lot of times where you can survive with DBs that maybe struggle as long as you're getting the pass rush, as long as you're getting the pressure on the quarterback. And when teams are able to slow that down by either running the ball or a lot of quick plays or catching, you know, putting those guys on their heels, that's where a secondary really gets exposed. They're banking on the front seven, winning the game for them, and then being able to survive on the back end. And and when that doesn't happen, they get a lot of they get a lot of issues. So I want to talk Kansas City Green Bay. There's an egregious miss <laughs> on a, a deep ball for Kansas City. You're going to do business as business is being done. So you you research the officials going into the game. You know what they like to call, what they don't like to call. So if guys are, if it's a crew that doesn't really call a lot of pass interference penalties or a lot of illegal contacts, you're going to be more aggressive. If you go into that game and suddenly they're calling it tight, then you got to pull off. But as the game unfolds, they're not calling it. You get that much more aggressive knowing that you can take chances because that's not how they're going to do it that, that week. So as long as you do business as business is being done, then, then you're okay. It's when you don't adjust, you've got real problems. <laughs> um, Kansas City has got the same Green Bay stuff, which is young, talented receivers. They're not quite all there yet, but we're not fair with Kansas City because they're a dynasty. At this point in the season, if you don't have a buy to correct stuff, you are what you are, right? Can you get much better? A buy you well, can, because I saw, I, saw, um, I saw the Cowboys. McCarthy went to a buy. They've been a different team. Yep. But you're on a treadmill now. Well, well, here's the thing with Green Bay that I think is happening, and this happens a lot. When you've got a young team, you get to about the middle of the season, and those guys should take a dramatic jump. Because an older team, that's where injuries start happening, that's where fatigue starts happening, and the older players tend to either steady off or decline. With a team like Green Bay, who's as young as they are, the reps are building up. They're not getting the injuries they're, they're used to how the NFL season works, so now they take this dramatic leap. So they're all growing together, and they're getting better together. And the other thing is a little bit like you don't know what you don't know when you're young. Right. You don't know that you need to be intimidated by <laughs> Mahomes. You don't know that. So there's that, that, that competitive ignorance that's actually a great thing for yeah. a young team because you believe you can play with anybody and you can beat anybody, and you've got that youthful arrogance that can really help you as you get into these games that other teams don't necessarily have. You know this with Brady. You dealt with a young Brady. But I thought one of the problems last year with Aaron, Aaron is a Hall of Famer. He has a standard. And he just didn't have the patience to deal with you <laughs> running the wrong route. It was like he was, the, he was Bruce Springsteen and the band was all hipsters. He's yes. like, guys, hit the notes. Jordan Love is like, yeah, I'm going to throw some wild erratic crap here. We'll grow together. So, like, Jordan Love will go to the sideline and be like, bro, I... I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I do think generationally, I like that Green Bay, 25-year-old guys growing together, I think it does matter. Yeah, it, it's huge because Aaron, Aaron is also that very strict parent with such a, with such a limited patience for any type <laughs> of m mistake. And, right. and, and he holds himself to a high standard, but he's, he's going to hold you to it. And he also doesn't forget. So you're not going to get a chance after you make a mistake necessarily. Remember Christian Watson yeah. dropped the first play of his and career? And that was, that was it, it was for over. Where would Jordan Love? Yeah, he's been there for a long time, but he hasn't played. So he's going to make a ton of mistakes. These guys are going to make mistakes. They're going to laugh about it. They're going to, they're going to work together to try to get it fixed. They're going, to, they're going to appreciate each other's flaws and try to help each other get better as opposed to it feeling like you're getting scolded by the teacher for making a mistake in the class. Okay, um, let's pivot to Aaron right now. There's a story the Jets want Zach Wilson to play, and he didn't want to play. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I kind of don't blame him. So I will say this is that, um, and this happens in all life and all business, is that, you know, the grass is always greener. And the one thing I said when Aaron left, I'm like, dude, you've never had a bad O line. Green Bay develops and drafts O lines great. This Jets O-line, outside of Elijah Vera Tucker, you could get four new. I mean, it's a struggle. I'm not saying that Aaron didn't appreciate for long extended periods what Green Bay offered. But it's like anything else. If you get something, you know, if, if your parents were rich and you drove a Mercedes or a BMW to school at 16, 
If you got a new BMW at 35, you'd be like, been there, done that. I think sometimes Favre at the end and Aaron at the end didn't quite understand how well run the Packers were. And then you go to the Jets, both of them, you know, you were there and you've got impulsive owner guy. Media's got fangs. Everybody's impatient. You know this. New York is hard. The Jets are hard. Yeah, the New York media is, is radically different than the Green Bay media. And I know everybody's exposed to the national media now at a different level than it was. But but it, it's, a, it's a different criteria and it's a different level of scrutiny. And, and things are dramatically different organization to organization. And sometimes you think, oh, my God, you, you hear stories about how great this place is run or how great that place is run. And then you get there and you're like, this isn't what what I signed up for. <laughs> this isn't what I what I expected. I, I do think if Aaron was playing, it, it would have a dramatic impact on on everybody. The old line would be better because it would be different types of schemes that the, they would face. My main frustration with the Jets is the Browns run the ball all the time, regardless of of how effective they've been. They lead the league in in, in rushing uh, attempts where the Jets are almost last. And and they've had three good running backs. They got rid of Michael Carter. But with a good defense, even if you run the ball and you're not getting what you want to get, you're giving that defense a chance to rest. You're giving that defense a chance to come out and play strong. They never do. You don't have that in New York. There's nothing that they rely on. And there's no way to take the pressure off the O-line right now. So every week it's, it's kind of the same movie playing out over and over again. Yeah. All right, you were with the Patriots. You've got ring after ring after ring, three Super Bowls there. There's been a cultural shift in the NFL. It has pivoted to offense. New England is inept, and it has got, for three straight years, significantly worse. Are you shocked how bad it is? Yeah, I'm shocked that they they have given up 10 points or less in three games and lost all three of those games. And when you look at the coaching staff, so – Bill is obviously talented. Bill O'Brien has been a very successful offense coordinator in the NFL. Even Joe Judge, you can say what you want to say about him, but he's been a good uh, special teams coach. They've got they've got really good coaching in place, and it's it's shocking to see some of the mistakes they make, some of the self inflicted errors that they have, which is which is so off brand for what it's been for year year in and year out, regardless of, of who the quarterback is. Uh, it's it's amazing that, that they are where they are right now. I just, I don't know if you're going to go and find a better coaching staff if you do move on from Bill. And, and you might want to think seriously about giving him another opportunity to get this right before you just think, okay, we're going to scrap all of these, about, all of these guys this? and... Green Bay has drafted more twitchy, talented receivers in two years than New England in 10. Just take him out of personnel. Yeah, that, that to me is the challenging part because he's had so much influence for, for so long. But he's only drafted two wide receivers in the first round over the life of his... Both were busts. Chad both, Jackson yeah. and Nikhil Harry. Yeah, there's those two guys. And then there's Derek Alexander back with the Browns, the Michigan yeah. wide receiver. He was He was not bad. But that's not really his his forte. I think a, a real weakness has been their tight end position. It's yeah. always relied so heavily on tight ends. Neither one of those guys are blockers. So you've lost that component of the offense. It's always been such a big part of it. And it's, it is it is pretty amazing to see where they are at this point with the quality of coaches they do have on that staff. When you watch these games at this time of the year, do you ever miss coaching? <laughs> the when when somebody wins a big game and and or a tight game and and you you remember that feeling and that emotion and what the locker room is like and the camaraderie and and how special that is you miss that component of it but then when somebody loses on the west coast and they, you know they've got to go back to the east coast and they're <laughs> going to get in at 6 in the morning and then you've got to gray the tape then you've got to meet with the i mean there's just it layers upon layers of 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 work to do week in and week out, you think, eh, that's, I don't really miss that aspect of it. <laughs> you know, I would, being on the back end of a, a 70 point loss, like the Denver staff had to deal with at one point, that would have been pretty rough to, you know, so there's, there's moments where you think of all the great things, but unfortunately, Colin, the, the special moments you kind of appreciate for this amount of time, this little amount of time, 
and the losses tend to linger longer than, uh, I used than to, anything else. I used to cover the late Jerry Tarkanian, and he said, I can, I remember every loss. He goes, he goes, the wins are not nearly as satisfying as the losses are painful. Yeah, the wins are, it's like this brief euphoria, and the losses are like a bad hangover. <laughs> that you just, it's just hard to shake. It's that fourth gen. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the fourth just, gen. You don't, feel, you don't feel good for three days. Yeah, there's nothing, right. there's nothing you wake up and you're happy about. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.